Let's look at spreadsheets and we're going to be working in Microsoft Excel and we're going to be looking in this video at the subtotal function. Now you might know how to find the average of a range of numbers or the max and or the min of a range of numbers. You might be able to find those using individual functions. Now the beauty of the subtotal function is that you can use one function and you, it can apply to any of those scenarios. And so let's have a look. So yeah, we've got the subtotal. We're going to put the function in here in D4. And here's a bunch of numbers that we're going to apply the function to. So I'm going to type equals subtotal. And you'll notice that two parameters appear. The first parameter is a number that represents what function or what type of effect you want to apply to the range of numbers. So you want to find the average of the numbers or the min of the numbers and so on. And then the second parameter will be which, which numbers are you going to apply that to. And it can be multiple lists or multiple ranges. So if I want to find the average of these numbers, I would select 1 because 1 represents the average option. And I'm going to go comma. And now the range of numbers I'm going to apply the average to. So I'm going to select all of them and close the bracket. And so that number is the average of all of those numbers. Okay, so those were that's basically how a subtotal function works. You basically give it the number that represents which uh, effect you want to use, and then the range of cells. So I've written out all the um, possibilities over here. So if we go back here, I'm going to redo this one. And I want you to notice that we've got 1 to 211, and we've got count, count A, all these. So that, yeah, we specify what they are. So if, most of the, often we use average, count, count all the non-blank cells. Count just counts the numbers. We've got max, min, the product multiplies all the cells together um, standard um, deviation and all that and standard deviation p those are for your statistical uh, calculations those of you know your stats um, some and then variance and variance b those are for your statistical stuff as well those who cl clicking on variance or want to find the variance of those numbers now you'll notice if i go from 1 to 11 there's a whole bunch of ones that continue after that and like they have the same names as these ones so I've written them like this. So we've got 1 to 11, and then we've got 100, and then we've got like a 10 in front of that number, or in this case, just a 1. But we, so we've got two options, when to use which one. Okay, so the, the key for this is like, when, when do we use which average? It's because if I come over here and I try, hey, let's put 101 here. So we find the average as well, but we're using the second version of the average. And I'm going to go, okay, let's select those options, boom. I get the exact same results. So why are there two? Well, the, the second list of options over here, they apply. So let's say, for example, we're going to hide a cell. So if I say equals subtotal, and let's do the average again. Or let's, let's do the sum. I want to do the sum. So the sum is number nine. So number nine of this range of cells. Boom, boom, boom. So if we add up all those numbers together, we get 676. Now, what happens if I come here and I go, you know what, I'm just going to hide this little block over here. I'm going to hide it. Did you notice that this did not change? So it included all the numbers that are actually hidden as well. Okay, but if I go and apply the other sum function, which is not 9, but 109. So if I try 109 there. Take that 9 there. You'll notice the number is slightly different. It's because it did not include the hidden number so these ones over here don't include filtered numbers or numbers that you can't see that are hidden in that type of thing so if i go and i unhide this you'll see my function changes because i'm using the 109 one which only takes those that you can actually see so that's the the options that are available to you so if you know you're going to have some hidden numbers but you want to include them in your um, function then make sure you use the first uh, range. If you don't, if you want to make sure they're not part of the calculation, then you use this set of numbers for that. Now you might go, why don't we just use the average and count? Well, um, there might be situations where you want to, in the calculation, change between an average and a min based on this number. And you can use like if statements or whatever to calculate which of these options to use. So that's the power of the subtotal function. Um, but most of the time, if you don't need to use the subtotal, most people just use the average or the count or whatever. They use those options. But if you want some variety, or if you want to use, like you want to get, you don't want to consider the hidden ones, then you can use the subtotal function. So there we go, the subtotal function. 
For more videos on Excel, go to our YouTube channel, click on the subscribe button. We'd love for you to follow us and let us know. Leave a comment. We'd love to hear what you feel about our videos. And if you think we should do other videos, you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long way.